There's an easy GMAT data sufficiency question. I'll classify this one as a 600 to 650 level question from the topic number properties, sequences and series with specific focus on arithmetic progression. Let's get started. Set S contains the following elements 7, 11, 15, 19, 23 and it includes an X. The question is what is the value of X? We have some information in these two statements, statement 1 and statement 2. We need to figure out using the information in these two statements, will we get a value, will we get an answer to this question? Before you solve any data sufficiency question, run through this quick checklist. It will take you all of 10 seconds, but this clarity will help you get answers right. The first one is, what kind of an answer will this question fetch? It is, what is the value of x? So you need to come up with an answer, which is a number. You can say x equals 21, x equals 93. A value is the answer to this question. In some cases, it might be speed, in which case it should be a number followed by a unit of speed. So have that level of clarity. Second question that you need to get an answer is, when is the data sufficient? In any DS question that's asking you to find out the value of a number, the data is sufficient. Note this word when you have a unique value from the information given in the statements. If you're able to say x equals 29, there's only one value that's possible. If I use the information in the statements, the data is sufficient. I'm just giving you an example. But conversely, we said x could be a 29, a 33, a 77. Then you're not coming up with a unique answer. Then the data is not sufficient. Lastly, run a quick check in your mind. Is there anything else that we know from the question stem? Question stem states that this is set yes. That's what it says. Recall the definition of a set. Definition of a set is basically this. A set is a collection of well-defined unique elements. Probably this unique elements is the definition of the set, which is going to be very useful for us, which means that X has to be a number which is different from what we have seen here. It cannot be a 7, 11, 15, 19 or a 23. It's something other than these five numbers, right? So that is information that we're deriving from the question stem. Let's get started. Let's start with statement one alone. Always start with statement one alone, then move on to statement two alone, and then if required, combine them. What do we know? We know that the elements are in an arithmetic progression. What is the approach I'm going to take to solve this particular statement? I'm going to look at a counter example. Is there only one value that is possible? These elements are in an AP. Let's just check it out. 7, 11, 15, 19, 23. 11 minus 7 is a 4. 15 minus 11 is a 4. 19 minus 15 is a 4. 23 minus 19 is a 4. The given five numbers already are in an AP. X has to be the number to the right of 23 is the immediate temptation that comes to us. So if the common difference between each of these numbers is a 4, then X equals 27 is what we get from statement 1. So it looks like statement, it appears as if statement 1 is sufficient. But hold on, nowhere is it said in the definition of a set that the elements in the set are arranged in an ascending order. X need not be a number to the right of 23. X could be a number to the left of 7 and these numbers could still be in an AP if X equals 3. If X equals 3, 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23 will be in an AP with a common difference of 4. If X is at 27, 7, 11, 15, 19, 23 and 27 will be in an AP with the same common difference of 4. Is X equal to 27 or 3? It could be either and it would have satisfied this information. Using statement 1, we are not getting a unique value. We're just getting two values, but still we are not getting a unique value. So statement 1 alone is not sufficient. 1 alone is not sufficient. Let's eliminate few answer choices. If 1 alone is not sufficient, eliminate A and D. You can do this closing your eyes. A says statement 1 alone is sufficient. Obviously, it is not sufficient. D says each element is independently sufficient. If 1 alone is not sufficient, each of the statements independently can never be sufficient. What are we then down to? We are down to choices B, C or E. Let's summarize till this point in the next slide and then move on to evaluating statement 2 alone. The common difference is 4 for the existing elements. They are in an AP. That's evident. What could be the values that X could take? We realized it could be an X or it could be a 3 or a 27. So we have more than one value. One alone is not sufficient. Eliminate choices A and D. We're down to B, C or E. Summarized it. Let's move on to statement 2. Evaluate 2 alone. Forget ever having read statement 1. What does statement 2 say? It says that X is a prime number. X is a prime number, infinite prime numbers. X could be a 2, X could be a 23, X could be a uh, any number, as in 31, 47, they're like umpteen, infinite values possible for X. This statement is very easy to say, it's not sufficient. Two alone is not sufficient. What were we down to after evaluating statement one? We realized one was not sufficient. We real, ruled out choices A and D. What were we down to? Choices B, C or E. I'm writing it in this order. If two alone would have been sufficient, we would have gone with B. 2 is also not sufficient. Let's eliminate choice B. What are we down to? C or E. Summarize this bit too quickly before we move on to combining the two statements. X is prime. Infinite values are possible. 2 alone is not sufficient. What can we eliminate now? We can eliminate B. 
from the shortlisted version of BCE. So what are we down to? Choices could be either C or E. Combine the two statements. What do we have from statement one? The elements are in AP. The elements are in AP. We shortlisted the two possible answers for X. X could be a three or X could be a 27. So statement one alone left us with two values. Statement two says X is prime. When we evaluated two alone, there were infinite possibilities for two. But when we combine it with one, there are only two values existing for X from statement one. One of them, three is prime, which is what statement two says. 27 is not prime. So if we combine the fact that these elements in the set, the elements in this set are in an AP with a common difference of four, which is what we deduced, and that X is prime, we can say that the only value that X can take, the unique value for X is a three. Combining the statements, we have a unique answer. If we get a unique answer, then we can eliminate what choices we were down to C or E after evaluating statement two. Together the statements are sufficient. Let's eliminate E. Choice C is the correct answer. Summarize it before we move on. From statement one, we know that X could take exactly two values, three or 27. Statement two says that it's a prime number. If X is a prime between these two, which is prime, three is prime, 27 is not prime. So we can deduce a unique value for X that it is equal to three. Statements together are sufficient, so let's eliminate choice Z. Choice C is the correct answer. Before you leave, do three things. One, sign up as a trial user at wzko.in slash core. Start with statistics and averages. It's a free topic. It'll take you about three, four days to complete the topic, build momentum to your GMAT preparation. Then convert it into a paid user and unlock the remaining topics and complete your GMAT quant in probably a month and a half. Two other things I would like you to do. One, subscribe to this channel, youtube.com slash Vizaku and turn on the notifications. So every time we upload a video, you get a not you get notified of it. Lastly, there's one more thing that you can do. You need not just subscribe, you can do one more thing. You can join as a member of this channel. It's a little different from subscribing to the channel. As if you join as a member, you'll have to pay a small monthly fee. And for that, you get some member only perks. Click on the join button on the home page of the channel or beneath any video, you'll have a listing of what member only perks are available. These perks would help give you a boost to your GMAT preparation. Best wishes for a GMAT prep.